Hey friends, this is the Miss Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead, and today we're going to make candied fruit for our fruit cakes. Okay, what we're going to need for this is you can use fresh pineapple, but I didn't have any pineapples handy, so I just got two cans out of the pantry. And these are pineapple pieces, and I have drained and squeezed all the juice off. I've got two cans and I'm leaving them in separate cans because we're going to color them. One is going to be juniper green and one is going to be Christmas red. The reason I'm doing this is because my, I have a nephew who doesn't like the red and green cherries that I put in my fruit cakes. So I've got to have some red and green so we're just going to do some pineapple. Now first things first, we're going to take three cups of sugar into a heavy bottom saucepan. This is going to be a very heavy syrup. And we're going to add one and a half cups of water. We're going to bring this up to a boil and then we're going to turn it down to medium until all the sugar is dissolved. Okay, now our sugar has dissolved. And for the moment, I'm going to turn the burner off because I want to divide our sugar syrup between two pots. Now, this may seem like a waste, folks, but you know what? When you're done, whatever syrup's left over, you can use to flavor drinks. And because it's going to be colored syrup, you can use it to color flavored drinks. You want to make green herbal tea? Great. Okay, now, this is organic sugar, folks. But the food coloring is not. I'm picking my battles. All right, this one we're going to use the last of our Christmas red. We're just going to put that in there. And all candying fruit is, get down there. All candying fruit is, is replacing the natural juices with syrup. And then, do, then drying it. So there's our red. And we're going to put one can of pineapple in there. Give it a stir with our red popsicle stick. And I'm going to put this on the back burner and put it on low. And we're just going to let this simmer until these pieces of fruit look clear. Now we're going to do the same with the other can. Because again, to me, it wouldn't be Christmas cake if it didn't have some colors in it. That lid's going to be stubborn. And this is called juniper green, which is not that horribly bright green. It's a nice darker green. And I think that is green enough. And in goes. Yeah, oh, I like that color much nicer than the bright. It's more natural looking than the bright greens. Okay. And we're going to put these on simmer. Well, actually, we're going to bring them up to a, a, a slightly bubbling boil. Not too hard because we don't want it boiling over. And then we're going to turn them down, and we're just going to let them simmer, maybe for a couple of hours, until the pineapple chunks are translucent and have absorbed the green syrup. Now, if you look really carefully, you can see that this one still has some light color in it, and this one is totally dark. So these are almost done. Okay, so our green ones are done. And our red ones have a few more minutes to go, so I'm going to strain these and I will meet you over at the table. Okay, here's our green, and now, ugh, folks, these are going to be dehydrated. But if you just did wanted to candy them, you can sugar them and just set them on a wire rack so that they're all not touching each other and that'd be fine. But since I'm putting these in cakes tomorrow, I'm going to put them on the dehydrator. Now, I use the juniper green. You may want to use a brighter color of green. Okay, you may want to because it really did come out dark. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use the fine mesh trays because I don't know how small these are going to dehydrate to. So I'm just going to use parchment lined trays. Look at the red. Isn't that beautiful? And yes, I'm using food coloring. But you know what, folks? Think about it. You... You know, you don't know what the process those cherries and stuff go through in the store. So I like to do things as much as on my own as possible. 
Now I've sprinkled some sugar on here because I'm going to dust these with sugar afterwards. And here's another secret. If you look at the ingredients on candied fruit and candied citrus peel, that stuff is made with rutabagas and candied peel. And I don't have any candied peel this year. I didn't make any. But if you don't have pineapple, you can do this with bits of carrot, like raw carrot, raw turnip, you know, or if you have canned pineapple in the cupboard like I did. But, it, you know, I mean, it doesn't ha necessarily have to be fruit. Why? Because you're boiling it in sugar syrup. Okay? So that means, let's just get this on here and start spreading it out. That means, even if it's a vegetable, like you need a, like a semi-crunchy vegetable, because once they're candied, no one's going to know the difference except the texture. But you know me, folks. I wanted to, I, most of my, my fruitcakes are different every year. One year I use candied cherries, one year I don't. One year I use, you know, citrus peel, one year I don't. Now, I'm just going to dust this with sugar over top. Isn't that beautiful? And this will hopefully help them from sticking together too, too much. So if you want a really bright green, I would go ahead and use a brighter green. I just put too much dye These in. These go at about 145 degrees for the night. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so here is our candy pineapple. Now it's not hard and it's sticky, but then, you know, if you ever bought candied fruit for fruit cakes, it's pretty much sticky. This is the Mrs. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead saying that's how you make candied pineapple for your fruitcakes. Take care. Bye-bye.